Look here, I'm Rosalind. Tell me a truth where God love now. Why the people in want me talk the real truth about Ruth Stater? You know, since them people are mixed up. Why they want me talk the real truth about Ruth Stater? Because God knows them ask me the question, me I go right in.
Good afternoon, and welcome to week three of 10 Weeks in Jamaica, Theater Conversations from Jamaica to the World. I am Akiba Abaka, and I'm one of the co-founders and co-artistic director of Akiba Abaka Arts. We are an international theater production company that creates plays, concerts, and talks, as well as processes for making plays, concerts, and talks for the world stage. This series is presented in partnership with Raw Management Agency, an esteemed talent agency representing artists and groups across all genres of film, theater, television, voiceover, branding, and endorsements. We're very grateful to work in collaboration with Ms. Nadine Rollins, Raw Management Managing Director, and co-curator of 10 Weeks in Jamaica. 10 Weeks in Jamaica, Theater Conversations from Jamaica to the World, is a talk series very unique in its structure because it shares the behind the scenes stories of Jamaica's theater community with the global theater community as well as the Jamaican and Caribbean communities in the diaspora. Each week, Jamaica's leading theater pioneers and practitioners narrate their histories and memories of the Jamaican stage, as well as offer their visions for the future development of theater in Jamaica in this 21st century. The series is made possible by our sponsors and publisher, HowlRound.com a free and open platform for theater makers worldwide that amplifies progressive disruptive ideas about the art form of theater and facilitates connections between diverse theater practitioners. 10 Weeks in Jamaica is also sponsored by the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center at the City University of New York in Manhattan. The Siegel Center is a home to theater artists, scholars, students, performers, arts managers, and local and international performance communities. Out of many, we are one, is the motto of the Jamaican people. And Jamaica's theater legacy dates back to the 15th century or 1400s and represents a diverse collection of stories about the people and cultures that have lived on the island for over 400 years. We started the conversations on November 1st talking about the iconic, Jamaica's iconic Ward Theater with special guests Oliver Samuels, Brian Heath, and Enola Williams, producer of Kingston on the Edge Arts Festival. Last week's conversation was also dedicated to a Jamaican icon, an iconic theater, the Little Theater Movement and the Pantomime, and the legendary Miss Louise Bennett. In this conversation, we were joined by Anya Bludon, as well as McSay Ellington and Dr. Deborah Hickling Gordon. For today's conversation, we venture down the road of the highly popular, commercially dominant genre of Jamaican roots theater. Now, Wycliffe Bennett and Hazel Bennett, I'm gonna hold up this amazing book that every human should have in their library and their collection. So just check it out. Make sure you check it out. Wycliffe Bennett and Hazel Bennett, authors of the book, The Jamaican Theater, Highlights of the Performing Arts in the 20th Century, compares roots theater to the pre-dramatic ceremonies of ancient Greece by stating, some of these ceremonies also provided opportunity for considerable byplay and mockery between participants and spectators. Probably the most noteworthy characteristic of the Aristophanic comedies which survive is their commentary on contemporary society, politics, literature, and the Peloponnesian War, which was raging at the time. These were the times when, in addition to fantasy, farcical situations were typical and considerable emphasis was placed on the pleasures of eating, drinking, sex, wealth, and leisure. Coupled with the comic elements were some of the most beautiful lyrics and some of the most obscene passages in Greek literature. These plays and their reception are not far removed from what is experienced today by those who attend the Jamaican roots or comedic play. 
Now, last week we heard from Miss Faye Ellington. She called out the names of some of the pioneers of Jamaican Roots Theater, Ed Ben Lewis, Harold Holness, Ralph Holness, the producer who is credited with naming the genre Roots Theater, and playwright Paul Beale, author of over 50 Roots plays, among them the classic Anda Minoas and Obia Wedding. I remember those two plays. Today we are joined by an esteemed panel of three of Jamaica's most popular thespians and stalwarts of the Roots Theater stage. Our first guest is Mr. Valier Muffy Johnson. He started his career in theater as a student at St. Andrew Technical High School when he gained a role in the Jamaican hit classic movie, The Harder They Come. You may remember him, he's the guy pushing the push cart next to Jimmy Cliff. <laughs> He launched his commercial theater career in productions by Ed Wallace Productions, the Pantomime, the Jamaican Pantomime, the National Theater Trust, Basil Dawkins Production, and Center Stage Theater to critical acclaim in productions such as Tantalu, Trash, Room for Rent, Stepfather, Toy Boy, Pinocchio, Children, Children, Breadfruit Kingdom, and Strength of a Woman, among many others. He's also been a TV star with regular appearances on programs such as Oliver at Large, Claffy and Tharge in Charge, and the very, very popular legendary Lime Tree Lane, gathering nicknames from each program as he goes. The nickname has stuck with him throughout his career is Claffy. Well, a lot of us kind of remember him as Mafi from that scene. Give generously. <laughs> Welcome, Volier. Hi, how are you doing? Doing very well. I'd like to introduce our next guest, Miss Maylin Lowe. Miss Lowe was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and began ballet at age four years old and trained for over 12 years with the Norma Spence and Rowe Ballet Company. She transitioned into musical theater as a teenager in productions such as Cats and Aladdin with the Jamaica Musical Theater Company and the Little People Company. She studied acting and completed the summer program at AADA in New York, and then went on to Emerson College in Boston, Mass. So she is an Emersonian, like many of the producers of this series, in a, and she made where she majored in acting. On her return home, she landed a role as Tanya Blackburn in Jamaica's longest running soap opera, Royal Palm Estate, which she played for over 10 years. She has worked with all major producers in her industry, such as Father Holong and Friends, Oliver Samuels, Jambiz Theater, Dale Harris Productions, Shibata and Stages Productions, and Basil Dawkins Productions, just to name a few. In 2010, Miss Lowe won Best Actress at the ITI Actor Boy Awards in Jamaica for her role as Annie Palmer in The White Witch of Rose Hall. Her latest play, her, her latest role was with Basil Dawkins, Pressure Drop at the Little Little Theater. Welcome, Maylin. Hello. So nice to be here. Thank it's you. Nice to have you, fellow Emersonian. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest is Keith Shibata Ramsey, a Jamaican actor and comedian best known for his appearances in Roots Plays. He is often to re referred to as simply Shibata, a nickname given to him by his father. In 2006, he entered his first season of CVM-TV, later television of Jamaica, and um, he entered a competition in a, a comedian elimination show called Comedy Bus, where he placed third. From there, he was recruited by Stages Productions to appear in roots plays such as Bashment Granny. In his career as an actor, Shibata has done over 20 plays, including The Wedding Scammer, Crosses, Clash, Chicksta, Set Up, and Get Out. And of course, we must not forget, Shibata comes to town. Welcome, Keith, or should I say Shibata? Well, any name will you use for me, honestly. <laughs> all right, all right. So listen, before we start, right, because we're all theater, and theater is nothing that speaks to the times. And as the, the Bennett's pointed out, the Roots Theater, like the Greek Theater, was a theater that commented on current events of our time. Currently, there's an a, a incident that happened in Kingston recently with a young woman, uh, Kaylin Dixon, Dixie, if I get her name correct. And some statements were made by you in your character 
as she yeah. not so much in the man as Keith Ramsey, uh, that were landing on some of your fans in a way that is a bit sensitive and hurtful at this time. Can you say something to that before we continue the program? Well, I just want to say that my statement was very clear. What I said about Caitlin, I, I'm Caitlin, I must say that I do not condone violence against women. I don't do that. I want to make myself clear. What I said the other day, as it relates to Kaylan, I just want to make myself clear that my statement, I do not condone violence against women, period. Period. Thank you so much. Sometimes in our, in our character and in um, the roles that we play, we're, you know, we're, we're working in, in the moment of the time. And sometimes some things may be said and it's taken out of our real character. So we really appreciate that because... Um, we want to uplift Black women. We are Black women ourselves. We want to uplift our stories and we want to elevate the great and amazing theater that's coming out of Jamaica and mashing up the world. And so we just want to say, you know, that we want to no harm, no hurt to anyone. Um, it was no yeah. harm, no hurt. No harm. And with no respect hurt. for all and wishing Kaylin and her family. Uh, a speed of recovery. recovery. Speed of recovery with love to all. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Volier, I want to ask you a question, sir. <laughs> you were making your way between the film world and the theater world when Roots Theater entered the scene in 1970. What was it like at that time? Was, yeah. was Roots Theater a disruption of the norm? No, no, no. It wasn't. Um, Roots Theatre was always been there, you know. It's always been there. It was just low keyed and it was like a community thing. Okay. It was always been a part of the Jamaican culture. Okay. Right? And we had now the the the, the major theater, the mainstream theater that would present you with um Shakespeare and you name it, you know. Until in the 70s when Jamaicans start to write Jamaican plays. Mm. Roots Theatre then become prominent because the Jamaican theatre now start to adopt and start to take after the, 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 um, the, the, the mainstream theatre that was produced in uh, all these foreign plays. Mm. But Roots Theatre became stay Roots Theatre. Right? And then the ordinary man on the street would gravitate to the roots play. Hmm. So they had a mass audience. They end up having a mass audience. So roots theater is, is the is the theater for the ordinary man. The ordinary man. The ordinary the man. Gentry, uptown, downtown, yeah, yeah. all around town, right. town every because color of the town. I was surprised to know how much mm -hmm. the uptown people. And you know what, what we mean by uptown in Jamaica? You know what we mean? Uptown. <laughs> yes, uptown is uptown. <laughs> upper crust. <laughs> yeah, the upper crust. And a lot of them went and saw, because they, they were curious, and they wanted to know, what is this big thing about Obia Wedding and under my nose? And they went downtown and saw it in the war theater. Mm. They went down there and looked look at the show. And a lot of them were surprised to see what... Um, what was being done and why people enjoy it so much. Right. We're going to talk a little bit more about what was being done and why it's so well enjoyed. I want to toss this one to Maylin. Now, Maylin, how does a classically trained ballet dancer, thespian, Shakespeare, <laughs> what you are doing at the Roots Theatre, mistress? What's going on? Talk to me. What well, are you, you know, doing Akiba, in the Roots Theatre? How do you um, find your footing? Um, Volaire is very right in that, um, you know, it's uh, it, it roots roots is kind of it was looked down on. Um, it, there's this class thing with roots, and for me as an artist, I'm very interested in form, and I'm very interested in genre. So I like all types of theater, and roots theater came into my face because of its popularity. I don't think it's something that started in the 70s, as Valer says. Maybe it kind of got its footing and emerged. But people always wrote stories, always told stories, um, repeated myths, 
and their culture lived this way. It's like music. So um, it, it has its place. And for me, I just had to get involved to find out more about my culture firsthand, taste it, live it, experience it. And um, it was just thriving. I was lucky um, that I jumped in at a time that Chibata was really dominating the scene and still. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's wonderful, I think, also um, on, a, on a political level. Um, the world is going through a renaissance, a little revolution mm -hmm. and an awakening. And this goes back to even language and patois. Mm -hmm. and us realizing and accepting and using and practicing and also um you practicing know just our native tongue practicing the tongue of very our much mother, so not the very tongue much of so our conquerors exactly our very much okay. so and also so, um being comfortable with it and uh, uh you know and roots theater is um it's just a part of that it's a mm -hmm. part of um, our heritage our culture how we talk mm -hmm. how we behave how we tell stories mm -hmm. and uh it's very important and very relevant and timely that you're doing this talk now on Roots um, because of what's happening globally. Mm -hmm. Do you feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Globally, cultures are trying to find themselves. People first, are people fighting. Are, yes, yeah, people are fighting. And, and first quite right. Are, go ahead. Sorry. And quite right. Oughtn't be silenced. Mm -hmm, and yes. um, uh, so I think, um, you know, and Jamaica is very particular. Jamaica is not just west african culture and history um it's it's merged and mixed and wonderfully interesting and um we're just a brilliant eloquent warm musical type of people caribbean people in general mm -hmm. and so um i think we're very good at being able to communicate um and comment uh, as you stated earlier on the times on the times of course well yeah. let's ask this to mr shibada Keith Shabada, which one was he use? Is there anyone? Come on, let's say. Shabby. Shabby. Yes, Shabby. 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 Yes, I'm, I'm going to talk like a member of the family. Shabby, here we go. <laughs> so, Shabby. Yes, love. The, the Shabada factor is a term that Caribbean producers use to explain what happens at the box office when your name is on a ticket. In my experience, your work, of, of, in my experience of your work, you have created a classic representation of Roots Theater with your approach to comedy and improvisation, as well as your crisp and precise performances and a wit and a comedic timing that is on the level of athleticism. It's like you're the UC and both of comedy, my brother. What drives you as an actor on the Roots stage? I mean, I must say to you that I'm thoroughly surprised as you as anyone else. It is, it is a shocker to say that. However, I mean, I didn't even know that I have this gift inside me. I don't even know what I'm doing. You understand if I might say that because it's in it, it wasn't, it wasn't a gift that I learned. You understand me? So when persons say to me that I am extremely good, I'm like, okay, so I really can't hype over it because I really don't understand my own gift because it's so big and it is so wide. However, coming into theater now, I normally um, be a harsh critique where acting is concerned. Anything of art is concerned, dancing, singing. So I'm really harsh in that area. And me coming into theater was a blessing because when I started with Comedy Boss, I said that um, I want to entertain the world. You understand me? I don't want to be a comedian. I want to entertain the world so maybe within me i know that there there were there were much more to express than just with a mic however i got called for stages production and this is where my gift now started manifesting and i gained knowledge of every single thing when i'm doing bashment granny one you understand me i mean I bashment granny one i didn't have such a lengthy scene i didn't have much things to do in the show but there and then I saw that the, the production needed help. And that's when I started creating characters and letting others know, others know that um, you can create characters behind the scene without being on stage, without them being present. You understand me? Without them you started to do the research, deeper research, character narratives to build out your no, it was all character physical. on the stage. It was all physical. It, was all mm -hmm. physical. it mm -hmm. wasn't anything um, taught or written. It was all physical. Mm -hmm. and 
we started with Bashman Granny one, then we did Shabala come to town and they wanted to challenge me. My own coworkers wanted to challenge me. So they said that I'm gonna play three characters. And I did. And I'm saying to myself, why are they doing this? You want <laughs> and then they they asked me to do like Father Like Son, and I was not in the script at all for Father Like Son. So I said to the producer, okay, I will insert myself. And that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. Now, Get Out, which is one of my favorite, favorite, right behind Bashment Granny One, Get Out. No, that's a parody on the, 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 the um, horror film, Get Out, right? <laughs> okay, all right, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, they introduced, um, my producer said to me at the time, said to me that, he wants to work with this white girl. Right? So you know me frightened for tourists. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> oh. So you thought we, you thought he was gonna cast a tourist. Right. Where were you gonna get a white girl in Jamaica, huh? I said, okay, I am on the North Coast. Yes, I'm at the biggest hotel, and these tourists they are coming in. You understand? So I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me work with Mailing. And then when Mailing came along, I said, okay, then. How is, she, how is it that she's going to understand my attitude, my style, my everything? But what I like about mailing is the fact that we are best friends off stage, but on stage, the worst enemy ever. <laughs> Beautiful. I mean, I enjoyed working with mailing. So mailing, I might never tell you this before, but let me use the opportunity. Mailing, you are a beautiful soul. I must say that. You and John Paul Manoa. Awesome. Let me, wow. So let me just, connecting this characterization and character development and the professionalism that all three of you bring to the root stage, to the origin of Roots Theater. Now, when you talk about professionalism, I come to understand that Roots Theater take its roots from a thing called tea parties. And if an actor wasn't professional, there was a way that the audience dealt with those people. Volier, tell us about the tea party and how, oh, the, the, how, how, the, how the producers used to make their money at the tea yeah. party. The tea party was something like, um, you know, in those days, you never have light and running water and people used to just live in them little house, two bedroom house and have a big backyard and thing. And they, they call a tea party. They call it this party, this concert, as such. And people would write them on like a poem and them this and them song for sing and thing and thing. And of course, they would come and perform. And while performing, they um you have people bidding to keep them on stage or to take them off stage. That might <laughs> if they're not good, people will pay a penny and a halfpenny and a trap ons. You understand? Six pence to take them off stage. And then no, if they are really good, they would pay shilling and so to put them back on stage. I, I, I mean, it was a community thing, a real community thing. And as I tell you, in those days, we used to have with drops, with coconut drops and fritters and pudding. All of that was... All the nice Jamaican dessert. Yeah, little, little, little um, Jamaican, what do you call it? Confectionery? Yes. Yes. We would be there. And we would also have a cup of tea. You can get yourself a cup of tea and our chocolate, our coffee, you know. You know, we have very good coffee in Jamaica. The best. Right? Right. <laughs> so it, it started from there where people would find means and ways to entertain themselves. Mm -hmm. You understand? We never have TV, we never have radio. At, at least, I want to tell you, maybe in the 50s, 40s, 50s, we never go back so long. Still. <laughs> but, no, no, you're too, you're, you're maybe face too young for the 40s, man. You're just, you're, yeah. you're six months old. <laughs> People never have radio, you know? A radio that's a, um, was a strange thing to some people when I'm here, I read them stuff and listen to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, huh? Mm -hmm. So, um, this was the kind of thing that you had to create their own entertainment. It's and they used to take jobs at the church, mm -hmm. and them, them jive the church, them jive the politician, them jive the man who loses his wife, them, you know, all sort of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It reminds, me, characters. Hmm? 
they add so, many, little, so much reminds, people to mimic. It reminds me a little bit of the vaudeville tradition. Um, it also reminds me of the early days at the Apollo. Because yeah. when you think about the Sandman, if you yes. were good and the crowd yes. got up for you, you stayed on the stage. But if you weren't good and the crowd said Sandman, <laughs> yes. you would see that big hook come and draw you off the stage. But in Jamaica, right. you all y'all were ballers. You were throwing money on the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, all right. It was fun. Right. It was real fun. And people used <laughs> to look forward to it. I can tell you as a producer, I would love it if... Um, <laughs> the audience would throw money on the stage as well if the act isn't good. We, would, yeah. we, we American and, and world producers would love that as well. <laughs> so, you know, speaking of the traditions, you know, this is really good to know where the culture comes from, that people were gathering. People were always, like you said, Maylin, before the 70s, before the what is chronicled. And Brian Heap, Dr. Brian Heap said this on the first week where he pointed out the war theater was not where the, the, the real integration of Jamaican. Jamaican theater and African Jamaicans were doing theater long before the war. From the, they, they brought the theater with them from West Africa. And so, Melin, you are a, a very Jamaican woman. You've had the opportunity to travel abroad and, and, and get your studies in the classics. However, you have not... Ex- separated yourself from Jamaican culture in any way. You actually deepen your Jamaican culture with your studies. How, yes. And then so some would say, you know, the language in Roots Theater. Well, you can't yeah. understand it. What, it's so brawling. It's so ghetto. It's so, how do you handle the, the language? How do you treat the language? I, I love it. I embrace the language. I'm better at writing patwa than speaking patwa. Because, unfortunately, I grew up um, with the colonial shadow over my head. So the high school I went to, or the upbringing, so to speak, um, you were chastised for talking patwa. It was considered, you know, speaking bad, or you're going to get in trouble, that kind of thing. So I just, I was a good girl. I, I, I was submissive, and I didn't, um, you know, I didn't want to have anything to do with that kind of talk. And it's so funny being able to think for yourself as you get older, um, not just embracing um, Patwa and Jamaican heritage and my culture, um, despite what people or the majority might think about it. Um, I'm not waiting for it to get the respect. I see respect due. So, uh, but this 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 goes into um, a lot of what I do. So I like to discuss women's issues. Mm-hmm. I like to discuss, um, you know, there, it's funny that Keith, that Shebby and you open talking about violence um, uh, against women, because uh, that's something that I, um, I really explore with uh, conceptual art, conceptual photography during COVID. It's mm-hmm. very important to me. So um, it's, uh, it's just been really rewarding to learn and to listen and to educate yourself about um, things you might not know despite popular opinion, and mm-hmm. see for yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yes. You know, it's interesting. As a, as a child, I remember I, I went to school up until about age nine in, in Jamaica. And, you know, I, too, had, had the privileges of being raised inside of the colonial, the uptown people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was on the, I was on the other side of halfway tree, so to yeah. speak. <laughs> and I remember as a child, you know, well, yeah, I'll let you jump in, but I remember I, I, I personally love the sound of Jamaican language. I think it yeah. sound better, and I understood better. And I remember I said to somebody at school one day, "Well, yeah, look, Pamela," and I got a beating from the teacher. Yeah. And from that day, I hated the English language because I said, "If you're gonna beat me to sound like the people." This is not yeah. something I want to be a part of. Well, yeah. That's not right. Yeah. 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 Something about it at, at seven years old. Something about that beating didn't feel right because yeah. I thought I sound beautiful. And yeah. the teacher beat me and said, you don't <laughs> talk like that inside. Right. Well, here, talk to us about the language. What I, yeah, what, what I was just adding to the, the conversation was that different people, different parts of the country, Jamaica, speak different patois. Mm. Different levels of patois. Mm-hmm. If I take you to St. Elizabeth and make the, 
let the people them down there talk to you. You need a translator. So Saint Elizabeth is the southwest, southwestern Jamaica. Yeah, 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 yeah. Southwest, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, the language there is difficult to understand. Although mm-hmm. my parents are from, my father is from down there, so I I understand them. You understand? Mm-hmm. But I cannot I can't even mimic them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, believe me. You, you know, have people from different parts of Jamaica who speak. You, it takes your time to, to unravel what they are saying. I once had the opportunity to go up to a, a compound. A compound is up in Oak Hill. Yeah. 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 A, a compound. A comp- Am I saying it wrong? Lord, me, they're parent too long. Yeah. A compound. I had the privilege of um, going La-Covia. up. Lacovia. Yes, going up to Lacovia, yes. I went up there to visit with the Maroons um, for their their annual festival. And the sound, the sound is, yes. is it, it has um, a rhythmic sound, but it also has elements. Jamaican language, have, especially the Jamaican that they speak in that area, yes, yes, it has that, there's a beat, there's a movement, and there's this bang, bang, bang sound, right? And, <laughs> yes. I, yeah, I remember... Oh. And, you know, I remember thinking, this is this is language. This is not English. This is not a broken. This is a completely oh. different language. This That's is, true. With its That's own incredible. vocabulary, its own vowel sounds, its own syncopations, it, and it, that the language has survived for so long, thanks to places like dancehall music and roots theater. That the language has survived to the point where. My little nieces and nephews who are born in the U.S. calling me, Auntie, can I get? A, can you get me a book? Because I want to learn Jamaican. <laughs> and I say, Here you go, sit down. That's how you learn Jamaican. <laughs> Let me tell you how, it, how you learn Jamaican. Shabada, you, one of the things I, I observe when I watch you, I was watching, um, the other day I was watching Shibada come to town, and I was watching a scene where there's a character, the, the actor is known um, popularly as Bad Boy Trevor. Um, I don't remember his character's name in, in, the, in the play. Ringo. Ringo? Ringo, 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 Ringo. So there's a scene where in which Ringo is the, 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 the igla, the stall, the stall keeper. And he tells you to watch his stall because he has to go off and go take care of some other business, some other politics in the neighborhood. And um, in that moment, as I watched it, I thought, look at this. This is an important part of the culture because the Roots Theater has specific stock characters. And I noticed that the stock characters are not just the historic stock character of the country come to town, like the character we see in, in The Harder They Come and your character in Shibata come to town. But when we see the, the, the shopkeeper or, the, or the, 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 the stall keeper, and we're seeing some of the the, 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 the aspiring artists, you see the singer, you see, you see these stock characters. Talk to us about how Roots Theatre, as you're making it today, is incorporating elements of really critical parts of Jamaican culture and, re- and preserving it. Talk to us about that. Okay, let me give my honest opinion about all of that. Mm-hmm. Theatre to me back then, and I'm not being a hypocrite, I'm just stating my facts. Roots Theatre, before I came in, I didn't like their performance. I mm. think acting was forced. Mm. I believe that they shout a lot, they overlap a lot. I believe that they don't listen. I believe that, no, honestly speaking, you understand? I believe that Roots Theatre is just that cutting edge, as the, the Tea Party, as Valerie said. I think the Roots Theatre, to me, would derive from a place, this is just my thinking out of the box to help me. I think Roots Data the Red from a place where you know you're bridging them and you're your friends on the corner talking. I you know you are the clown, you are the clown of the class, you uh, are the clown of the group. Yes, so if, yes, yes. If you're funny, you can do a stand up comedy. So if you're a smart actor like that, know what you can do if you're entertaining a small group like this, challenge yourself as to how you can entertain a large group. You mm-hmm. understand? If I get back now to what you asked me about the incorporation of roots theater, I mean, <clears throat> when I look at traditional theater, it starts one way for me. It starts one way, and if you you can follow, you can simple 
explain and tell the conclusion. That, that is to me though. Mm -hmm. The thing that Ruth Stater didn't have at that time that I'm talking about is that is the fact that they weren't paying attention to traditional theater. Mm. You so they didn't have a, a clear beginning, middle and end. Exactly, I think okay. Okay. that is for everybody. Mm -hmm. And Melina Valier must have said that it was for uptown people. Theater back then was for uptown people, but roots. <coughs> You understand, Mr. Down, downtown? I mean, you put yourself wherever you see yourself. That is that is me. You put True. yourself True. wherever you see yourself. Brilliant statement. If you don't believe that uptown theater is for you, because it's a theater, it's telling a situation and making it believable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not reading from a book and trying to understand the shit content. You understand me? That is the but when you're going on stage, and this is me why persons can't understand, and this is where I made my name, because no one in theater has ever done what I did. What I did, I teach on stage. I direct on stage. I produce on stage. I write on stage. I do all the important stuff that should be done off stage. I do it on stage. And in the same breath, I seek out a character on stage with this character that I'm playing, for another production. So there's no possible way as an actor, you can ever be stuck in a box. And for such, when I work with male in law, honestly to God, up to today, day, persons ask, up to today, persons ask me about Tanya. <laughs> and that's I your mean, character from Get Out. <laughs> from yeah. No, that's Royal Palm. Royal they know Palm. me as Tanya, <laughs> yeah. As Tanya out of I mean, she was so giving. She was so giving, she was willing to learn. And that piqued my interest. You understand? And I said, No, I love this girl. She wants everything that is there. You understand me? And when I worked with Melin Law, Melin Law came backstage one night and Mel but Melin had some repenting to do, you know. <laughs> but let me Mailing. jump in here. Shabana, let me jump in here and just stick to this, this notion of you're getting where you see yourself. That's a brilliant statement. And I really appreciate it is. that. Because I'm a producer, I'm a producer and I'm a director. And we're always looking at growing and welcoming our audiences. We're always looking at integrating our audiences. But history has shown across the world that theater can sometimes be um, just speaking to one group of people. Now, Valier, speaking on this getting where you see yourself, when you started as, as a actor in the classical Jamaican theater and in film. Mm -hmm. And then as a Jamaican person, right? Growing up in Kingston, growing up, you know, with relatives in the countryside, where did you sit in? Where do you see yourself? And where do you, you know, when I, your, your most uh, memorable character for me is definitely the, the, the priest in, in wow. Olive Oil gives generously. Yeah. Where, do, where is your sitting and, and as an actor, how do you try to meld all of those worlds together? Because roots is roots is not for everybody. It's not, but for those who it is, there's nothing like it. Tell us about that. No, let let, let me tell you now. You see, when I went into theatre in Jamaica, I started. I did a, the first show was skits written by Trevor Rowan. Yes, Trevor Rowan, Smile Max Orange. Yeah. yeah, it was just skits. It was, it was, um, here's a name for it. In theater, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And um, so I had within a short period of time, you have to change from one character to the other to another character to and I thought I, I thought it was just funny to do to do things like that. Um, but then I went to Lloyd Record that was doing West Indian plays, which I thought was very cultural, it was very cultural stuff, like the Rose Sleep in the beautiful Caribbean, Pillars in the Mud. Those plays are very cultural, cultural to Caribbean people, right? The work and of D.S. Like, Naipaul, the work of Derek Walcott. Walcott, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 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 You think of Moon on Monkey Mountain. Yeah, yeah, and, yes, yes. yes, yes. Continue. And then now we go into commercial theatre. That um, Ed Wallace commercialized the theatre like he was going to a movie on a Wednesday evening, you know? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We had like six or seven shows a week. 
and it was really commercial theater. And it was all about, you know, love and marriage, sex, that, that kind of thing. As a matter of fact, there's the show named Love and Marriage, Sex, The Good Doctor, you name it. And we used to translate shows from American scripts, translate it in Jamaica, like Murder at Howard Johnson, Jamaicanize it, Oliver and myself, and I, Grace McGee, we played it. So it, it was, so I had a cultural experience, and then I had a commercial experience with commercial theater. That is the time when the roots theater take off also mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered what it would be like to work in a roots theater. Because at the time, it was slightly disorganized on stage. They were disorganized. I mean, you see the first half of the show. Not slightly, not slightly earlier. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it's just true, true. It was disorganized, right? So we kind of want to do it and don't want to do it because of the thing. But when I went and worked with Shabbat, I know, in, uh, with, with Ruth's um, stages, it was then now I realized that they were trying to keep the thing as a storyline. I care what we, put, we did to it. We keep the storyline and the essence of the story. So it became more attractive. Exactly. So you had playwright Paul Beale. Yeah, you know, Paul was like that. The, the works for um, um, four stages, and yeah. also is the author of of Under Me Nose. And let me just I reference Under Me Nose for those who don't know. This one is one of the classic Jamaican comedies, and sure. it's actually about a very overbearing father <laughs> by the name <laughs> of Aloysius, and um, he 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 kind of takes on the character of many Jamaican fathers who work very very hard to send their children to school. And their daughters are their prize, and their daughters are their whole world. They actually have more hope in their daughters than they do in their sons. There are many Jamaican fathers like that. I know many of them personally. And um, Aloysius, you know, he's all he's all bearing. He's very cheap, and um, you know, he is doing everything to make sure that the little boys in the neighborhood don't come and distract his daughter because she's going to Yui. She's going on in life. And what happens is because of the way he is, all the boys in the neighborhood get together to figure out ways to, to fool him and to take away and, and, uh, um, and to pursue and persuade his daughter. And when you look at a play like that and you look at the social commentary, you may laugh at the top, but when you, every, I've watched um, Under Me Knows now so many times. When I was a young child, I wasn't allowed to watch it. And then I became a woman and I was able to watch it. And I look at it and I said, you know, you're laughing, but there's so much truth because number one, Fathers, black fathers, Jamaican fathers are not put out as protectors, as being there, as constant, um, ray, you know, patriarchs of their family. There's a negative stereotype around black men in general as fathers. But those of us who grew up in, in, in the society and know this, we know that fathers are there. They're in the home. They're providing for their children. Um, so speaking to um, Shibata, talk to us about... Yeah. Even though there is a lot of comedy at the top, what is really at the root of root theater? Because I think it's a very political theater. I mean, I believe that root theater to me, and this is always my belief, and I only can speak based on my acting. This is why I do what I do. I believe that root theater is a way of telling someone who, let me just say this. This is just like an analogy someone who don't understand English, it's hard to speak to somebody that is illiterate. It is hard to speak to them in an English form. What is it that they're going to understand? So I believe that Roots Theatre is a way of expressing the truth and expressing one's mistake. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because a lot of people, when they watch a Roots play, mm -hmm. we do things, we depict, we depict situations from the inner city. Mm -hmm. even from a family or from a particular community this is what we do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. theater and we laugh at it but even though as an actor you have to put yourself in, in a in an audience standpoint in an audience seat also so yeah. you're not yeah. just as an actor so you're clueless to how the audience react or to their reaction to whatever you're delivering 
And I think theatre is a place that tells the truth. It doesn't come with fairy tale. It is the raw material you get. What you see is what you get. We are telling you, Mr. Officer, how the fight really happened. This is it. And you might laugh at it because really and truly, if you look back at yourself in some situation, you say, oh my God, Jesus. So theater it, reflects. Theater is yes. reflecting. And as Brett, you know, they say Shakespeare says that theater is to, you know, in, in Hamlet, we hear young Hamlet say to the players to hold up for, as were a mirror to, a mirror to nature. And then Brett comes, Bertolt Brett, the, the great German playwright and theatrical philosopher, comes forth and says, no, theater is not a mirror to nature. Theater is a hammer that smashes. Um, exactly my point. And, and it is to disrupt. So I want to, you know, and so we're see, we, we see in a lot of ways in the Roots Theater, the mirror, and then we see the hammer. <laughs> so I want to Choose go, one. Choose one. Choose if one. You can't, well, if you can't merge the two, you got to choose one. Oh, you got to choose one. Well, I prefer the mirror sometimes because sometimes... No, I prefer to merge the, the two. Yeah. <laughs> so listen... <laughs> We're getting, we're moving now into the Q and A. We're getting a lot of comments from the um, from the uh, audience. A lot of great questions and great comments. And um, before we move into that, I'm going to toss some questions to you guys. But first, tell me something, Valier. You mean to, I heard that tens of thousands of people attend these performances? Bashman Granny too. Uh huh. Break record. And people brought their dinner. Break record. Their <laughs> porridge, their chocolate tea, and they lined up for hours. I never forget to say it in the night. I we went to this this place in Maypen. We couldn't keep it at a normal spot, at a normal, like in the in the in the garden of a hotel or anything like that. We kept it in this. Do you remember Shibada? This dusty place. Yes, yes. It was a big tea. It's yeah, yeah, a big place, an open space. And no, seven, no actual theater can hold you. You actually have to be yeah, outside right. in a field. Man. Seven thousand people were there that night. In one performance. Seven yeah. thousand. Yeah. Whoa. We yeah, you're gonna get some we're, calls we're, from some US producers soon because they <laughs> they're gonna want to know what they're doing. I can't we have a place out here named um when that place on Oxford Road name again, Shibada. Where? Where, where, where the artists keep um, stage show on Oxford Road. Pier one. No, Oxford Road, man, in, in Kingston. Oh. Mass Camp. Oh, Louis yeah. Benica. Oh, Mass Camp. Mass Camp. It's called, um, and the Mass Camp, it's called, um, Liga it's Mass Camp. The Golf Academy. The Golf Academy is one, but I remember when we were there, Mass Camp on a Mother's Day. I see it beside um, a housing trust. Right. That is the that is the big field. These are like Oceans. stadiums. So you mean to tell me theater in Jamaica is selling out stadiums? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Oh wow. That's I think I think I'm in the wrong genre. I think I need to come down to Jamaica and start producing. Okay. No, and yeah, get out. Right. <laughs> get but the I tradition. Think I, where, I think I see where my career is headed. Listen, let's take some questions from the audience. Right now we have Cheryl Ali from the uh, comments on YouTube. And she asked, Shabada, you have the freedom and of improv um, within Roots Theater. You're very good at improv and really great timing and instinct. Do you see yourself transitioning more into or um, more into or doing, going back and forth between traditional scripted theater with a more scripted structure? Or um, do you, just to confirm, you repeated the two questions. Okay. so. Um, do you see yourself going back and forth? So would you be working for a jam biz or would you be performing in the pantomime anytime soon? And then we also have a, qu I have a question for you after this, Valier. I mean, I can only see myself where I want to go. So if I'm doing well without um, being scripted like that, I think I want to pursue this. I want to continue. I want to perpetuate this side because it makes no sense. If I'm freely living like this, I want to cage myself to a script. Mark, I've worked with many directors, many writers, and I gained some knowledge that um, persons do write for them for themselves. You understand me? Mm -hmm. For me, when I touch the stage, I feel the presence of the audience. 
they are hungry for something, I have to give it to them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I would enjoy staying where I'm at. Okay. You know, it's interesting because I look at you and I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking about some work here in the U.S. by some incredible, incredible um, writers. And I think, man, we could really benefit from your, just your, the way you move your body on stage and just your mm -hmm. comprehension. So as I said, don't be surprised if the U.S. producers call you sometime soon. No, Valier, if you can help us, no, you see it. No, <laughs> Valier, if you can help us out to understand, we have an, a, a member of our audience who talks about the pantomime and just wanting to, you know, they mentioned that we we, we talked about the pantomime last week. Um, the, the, the question is, last week you talked about pantomime and now Roots. What is the difference between the two? And just if you can talk about Ralph Holness and his, tra his transition out of pantomime to being a pioneer of Roots, if you could talk a little bit about that. The pantomime is different. In It's not even like the pantomime you don't even call the, pan the pantomime is just pantomime. <laughs> It's not even like it's a traditional theater. The pantomime is a musical. It is, it is, it, we adopt it from England. Where every week, like every, every, right? yes, every Christmas in England, at every theater, there's a pantomime, right? Good. So it's really a musical with commentary, social commentary. Mm -hmm. And um, singing, a lot of singing, right? singing and dancing to tell parts of the story. Mm -hmm. So that's what pan pantomime is about. Okay. Ra Ralph now, Ralph came off uh, the Bim and Bam era, out of the Bim and Bam. And and they Clover. were a comedy duo, right? And yeah, they, and Clover. And, okay. And thing. Kind of like and, a, um, Laurel and Handy, um, for those of you who are um, scholars of vaudeville and American comedy era, kind of that kind of laurel and handy Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what Ralph did was, I think it was Bim, I, Bim wrote a, a script. I can't remember the name of the script. Mm -hmm. And Ralph took it and produced it. But Ralph was a clever producer. Very clever. Ralph is the only person I see in Jamaica as a producer okay. who put out two full page ad, center spread ad in the Gleaner. Oh, wow. Complete center spread. Gina the is the most major paper in Jamaica, right? Right. Okay. And at that time, okay. at that time, television thing was, you know, people wouldn't advertise on TV. We depend on the gleaner to tell us what is happening in theater. Mm -hmm. If you used to read the commentary mm -hmm. about theater in the gleaner. Mm -hmm. And Ralph, I have two full speech ad in it. You understand? He was going to be seen. And i tell you something, that man created draw a crowd crowd wow i don't know who i'm getting crowd him inside a poor white theater but in full the theater in full the theater so till, they were crowd outside the theater till they, they break the glass door at the front they used to have to do four shows a day and the war theater four, had yes had over especially, seats. especially if it's a holiday mm. like a boxing day Boxing um, Day, the day after Christmas, for yes. those who are not in the Commonwealth. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Our New Year's Eve day. Yes, yes. Our Easter Monday. Wow. Carl O'Brien, who's in New York City, he's he is a resident of New York, and Carl is letting us know that um, the Roots plays sell out New York as well. It's awesome to see the response. He notes that even people who don't understand what you all are saying, um, they they don't understand the words, but they feel the energy from the performers. And I'm really thank you, Carl, for that comment because when we when we met um, earlier, Mayling, you talked about that. Especially Mayling, you're a dancer, so your yeah, whole yeah. your whole um, you you have what's called kinesthetic intelligence, meaning oh my reading okay. through the girl. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she has what's called kinesthetic intelligence, which means what any any movement in a space. It's learning through movement, learning through the body, learning through your sensations. Yeah. So, as an actor trained in ballet to to stand, you know, upright. What do you do when the audience is 
cackling and talking to you. How do you respond? Well, listen, you know, Shebby was the best t tutor because Shebby actually method trained me on how to stand up, how to do a dem gal stand up, how to what dem we call bandy leg, right? Okay. How to relax to the body, the whole body language of, of the persona. Um, he took me into Franklin Town Ghetto many times to experience chicken back in a bag. Like, you remember yeah. these things, Shebby? Like, all kind of things. Like, for me to live it, really grow. And, um, you know, I wanted to add as well that as someone who's really been, um, you know, doing mainstream commercial theater in working with Shibata, I don't think he even is able to articulate or really understand what he has done for Roots. Now, mm -hmm. Volaire mentioned that Roots, um, you know, pantomime is musical, song and dance, telling a story, sort of commedia dell'arte. And I think Shibata and writers like Paul Beale, what they have done is they've taken these stereotypical archetypes of good and bad, like you'll still have a villain and so on, but they, it's such a modern form. I can only compare it to some writers like UNESCO. Ah, um, yes. um, and, and why I introduce that is because with Shibata, right, rhinoceros. You think about the absurdity exactly. of rhinoceros. Yes, right but school. not yes, just the yes. absurdity, Akiba. Yes. Also, um, the human quality. There is no good and bad. So I'll be playing a character in the ghetto who is good, but I have bad ways. Mm. But I might be the hero. But I also was a little bit of an antagonist. So it's mm -hmm. introduced, uh, this is a very modern form of theater. So he's taken these archetypes, um, and they're there in the script, you know. But the brilliance mm -hmm. of the actor, what I'm saying, is they've given it a, a, a human uh, quality, mm -hmm. where when you sit down and you watch the play, you see yourself. Because yeah. no one is completely good or completely bad, exactly. are they? Or yeah. the villain has their story, too. So it's remarkable. I don't even think he realizes... Um, uh, what he has done with Roots, because Roots, uh, to me, Roots, back in the day, was, you know, passive, very passive. As mm -hmm. much as you sing in Carry Me Aki Girl in Sid Market, it was very passive. It was not as aggressive. It was mm -hmm. not as quick. It was not as um, sharp. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Shibata has really um, set a standard there, I think. Interesting. So yeah. he, he, he pokes and he prods. I'm going to take a share a statement from another audience member, Philip Clark, just in line with what you're saying here, Maylin. He, he points out that Roots Theatre started out as yard theatre, which is the theatre of realism, like you point out with UNESCO's work and um, Ibsen and all of those, those European and you know Eastern European writers. It really celebrates the survival of the common man, forced to live in challenging yeah. conditions. Uh, Trevor Roan and Errol John, you know, in two weeks, we're going to be um, speaking to playwrights. We're going to start our playwright set, um, series in the talk, right? And we're going to talk, um, the, the question is a statement um, that um, George Bernard Shaw, Shaw visits Jamaica, he visits Kingston in, 20, in 1911, not Irmin, 2011. Shaw <laughs> visits Jamaica in, in 1911, and he makes a statement of um, the fact that the theater that he was seeing was not representing it. It was not Jamaican theater because the Jamaican the, the Jamaican people, their the the, prolet, the the working class Jamaican people, their story wasn't on the stage. So what Shaw was saying is, until you have that story, you don't have a theater. And so what you and Philip Clark are really honing into is that theater cannot just be for the uptown people, as Valier put it. Theater has to be a place where everybody can see themselves as Shabada say. That is profound. That is really profound, guys. That hit me at my that hit me at my core. I have to I have to pause there. But Akiba, that 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 applies to everything. For instance, with history, there are no women writers, there are no women heroes. Who mm -hmm. are you going to look for? Nanny of the Maroons? There were more, there were hundreds, but you don't hear about them. You don't hear about them. 
um, there are, in other words, people have always been been telling their stories, and Ruth Theater has always been. It's a, um, and they deserve a voice, and they deserve to to be heard and to come out. You know, this this one way of theater is not even ours. It's not even, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let me tell you. Go ahead, Valia. Go ahead. I don't think you should say not even ours. You must say it's not we, not we, the okay. people, not you, not we. Yeah, but it's, we, in other words, it's not. In other words, we are many other things. Things that yeah, yeah, yeah. apart from this, right. exactly. You know, we're many things. So it's only fair if I mean, you know. And I mean, I'm talking to the world now, but and I, I mean, I have to admit this that we are a very aggressive set of people. Even in the way we speak to each other, and I mean, you can't actually stand up and don't hear what I'm saying, but understand where the conversation is going mm -hmm. by our gestures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's 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 all Jamaicans are, right? Yeah. Not... I spent some time in Italy and I don't speak any <laughs> Italian. And I went to a lot of theater. Yeah. And I learned and I gained a lot. And I didn't understand what those people were saying. Yeah. But I enjoyed the play and for some reason I came out transformed. I felt something. So I'm gonna transition into this notion that people like to talk about aesthetics. Aesthetics, you've heard that term, aesthetics. A thing that has to be aesthetically pleasing. And um, my good friend and mentor um, points out to me um, a notion of aesthetics. People align it with beauty, but my friend and mentor, he points out that an, another friend of mentor of his changed his viewpoint of aesthetics. That aesthetics isn't about pretty things, beautiful things, aesthetically pleasing theater is Shakespeare and ballet and Moliere and all of those great people, or even Wilson and Baldwin and Hansberry, who we all love. But aesthetics is the opposite in its root of the term anesthetic. And an anesthetic is something that doctors give people to cut off mm -hmm. their feelings. And an aesthetic is something you give people to make them feel. So what is the aesthetic? What's the thing that you're doing to make people feel to the point where you would bring in box office draws, people would line up in the rain with their, their, their little bickle, as we call it, your pot of food, your, your cornmeal porridge, because I don't go, you know, I love to go beach with my cornmeal porridge. <laughs> what, is, what are you making people feel? What's going I on mean, here? Don't read me all the cornmeal porridge, Shibata. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, for me, for me, and this is what, um, and I'm going to use the privilege of being a bit of brother, a brother on Maylene's part. I mean, when I started working with Maylene, she was the one on stage to just stop and watch me and forget that she's on the stage with me. You understand me? And she said something to me one night. I don't even think she remember. She said to me, oh my God, Shibi, you are so good. And I, I'm like, I'm like, okay, Maylene, but this is what the show should be about. But I understand where she's coming from. And as you talk about that feeling, mm -hmm. as an actor, it, it can never be on the director or the producer to tell you that this is how you must emote. This is the feeling that you must, how you must emote a certain, certain scene, certain feeling. It is that you have to read with understanding and understand your audience before the show starts. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of actors, you don't understand your audience. The audience, they are not obligated to laugh at anything that we say or do. It is our duty to play a sales representation in front of them. So it's a in some ways, it's like you're a salesman. You're a sales rep. And no one is going to buy your goods if you can't sell it authentically. Valier, you have been, you you know, you, you've been in the, the theater, you know, Minerva, I'm not going to lie on your age because as I said, you got this baby <laughs> today. So I'm not going to call out disrespectful numbers. 52 However, years. <laughs> Say 24. 52 years. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yes. And in your years in the theater both in the classical theater, in the film world, in the television world, and in the roots theater. I feel like when I watch your work, 
It aligns with what Shibata is saying, this sense of responsibility to represent a truth in the narrative, in the, the lived true experiences of the Jamaican people. Where yeah. do you center your work as an actor in on the Jamaican stage? Where, where, what part, where are you pulling from? What are you trying to make people feel? The first thing, when you get a character, you, 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 um, you research the character, right? I don't, for the 52 years I'm on stage, I've been doing that. Research my little character and thing. Mm -hmm. You must make people on, who are watching you believe what you are doing. Mm -hmm. It must be believable, right? Mm -hmm. So when you make a joke and them laugh, you still I keep a straight face and make, it, make people believe that this is how stupid the person is or how seriously um, you take the situation. That is what you must project to your audience, right? Um, I have played a lot of, lot of different roles. But I mean, some of my en most enjoyable roles, I remember playing Madman three different times. Mm. And it's three different madmen. Mm -hmm. Three different. Mm -hmm. One of them aggressive. One of them is just a real nervous breakdown. You understand? Mm -hmm. One of them was trying to kind of wait through life mm -hmm. and then lose everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, it was a pantomime trash. Uh. We, we are playing a um, large bag of pan. And I had to tiptoe through that show for the two hours on my toes. The very last thing I showed that I went down on me and stood on my heel. Right? Um, in 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 Toy Boy, I was up. Oh, it, it, I, it just, it, my nerves gone. It was just, I was an honest person, very honest person. And mm -hmm. I ended up in prison because of my honesty. I'm from prison. Mm -hmm. When we come to prison, I have nobody, I end up in the crossroads market. I, eat out a garbage pan and to me reach uptown with me and eat out a dumpster and this lady picked me up and beat me up. <laughs> I care about the doctor. <laughs> you understand? Know but you have to make the story believable. And uh, when I work with Shibada, that was what we aimed at. Although we were doing different things on stage and sometimes at night time and some funny little things. <laughs> You know, but we even keep in a storyline and make people believe what was happening was true. You know, in the moment that you were telling that story of your character in Toy Boy, you made me feel, you see, because <laughs> the truth is, I talk about poverty, I talk about mental health as conditions, not characteristics, right? They're, 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 they're not even things you, in, you can inherit poverty, yes. You can yeah. inherit some, some challenges with your mental health, yes. But there are conditions that we can move in and out of. Out of, yeah. When you tell that story of that character, you know, having had a, a hard fall, then end up homeless on the streets, and all of what come with homelessness, hunger, um, not being able to, to to take care of your your your, your daily um, custodial needs, to shower yourself, to you toilet yourself properly, mm -hmm. all of these things. And when we see this character on stage. When we see him now on stage at the Little Theatre, at the Ward Theatre, we see somebody we know, but we also see somebody we fear we can become. Yes. That comedy, that comedy allows us to look at that character that we don't look at because we walk past the madman, the dirty madman, as we call them in Jamaica, the dirty homeless person. We walk past them every day and we don't look. Right. We, yeah, we don't pay them. Any, sometimes you might recognize them and say, what do I know that man? Then we used to teach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. Or this lady was a secretary, and this is what happened to her. But but I remember doing the, that play, Leonie and myself, Leonie Forbes. Leonie myself, Forbes, myself. yes, yeah. the great Leonie Forbes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got best actor for, 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 for the part. Mm -hmm. But I remember doing it in the night. And, and more than one on more than one occasion, people came out of the theater saying that they know somebody who, who the same thing happened to. Yes, huh? Yeah. So you, you have to be able to play, make, make, the, make, make the character believable. And you know, the thing is, when they leave, they're talking. So the theater yeah. 
they see the aspects of their lives on the stage, even in the Roots Theatre. They and right. it's, I mean, it's like you're going to see it more in the Roots Theatre because the Roots Theatre is going to be more deeply embedded in Jamaican everyday life than um, stories and narratives in, in brought to us from different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So that that's very valuable. I just want to go quickly back into the comments, questions from the comments. Um, we want to shout out to Mr. Glenn Campbell. Um, Glenn Titus Campbell is in the audience. That's an honor to have you. We're actually going to be talking to Glenn next week about the business of Jamaican theater. And Glenn Campbell is an actor, comedian, extraordinaire, extraordinaire, and also a serious, serious businessman when it comes to theater in the line of a Ralph Holness and the Paul Beals, you know, knowing how to pull the audience and how to manage it. So we're going to talk to Glenn. Glenn wanted to give all three of you, Valier and, and um, Shibata and Maylin a shout out. And, you know, you guys can watch the recording later, but he just wanted to send his love and camaraderie to you. We have a question from um, Chris Alid who asked, for Maylin and Valier, um, are there any aspects of uh, specific to Roots? So there are aspects of Roots theater um, that has helped you to hone your craft and or think about within the traditional theater space that you could benefit. So what are you taking from Roots Theater back into your traditional Western European style of theater and playmaking? Listen, I, <laughs> I don't even know how to add, um, answer that question because I know when I went, to, went, went over to Roots Theater and for a couple of years I worked with them, I gave a lot to them. I used to work with Mr. Beale. Mr. Beale was just a nice person, you know? And he, Mr. Beale wrote some very good script. And he would sit down and trash out the script. Work it out. Well, yeah, yeah, with him. What, I take, what would I take back to traditional theater? <laughs> I don't think I take back anything to traditional theater because I was so, I was spent so much years in it that um, I had nothing more to give to them. I had something more, I learned more going over to the Roots Theatre than what I had to give back to, to, to traditional theatre. So Which in is, a lot of ways, Roots Theatre expand, expanded you so much that you, you, you're not really looking to, to take anything back to tradition. You're, you're no, no, no. Roots Theatre was, was, it was fun, real fun when you were on stage, believe me. There are nights when we run down Shabbat and we climb the sound box, the Manalim team. Yes, <laughs> there was fun, but the story which we try, you, you have to fight hard to keep the storyline together. Because mm -hmm. the way the audience be. Mm -hmm. So they're, what, um, really, they're really roaring, you know, they're not laugh, them roar. <laughs> I mean, 10,000 people laughing or responding to you at 7,000 people. Yeah. 8,000 people at one time, it is a roar. Um, Merlin, any aspects of the roots style, the roots genre that you bring with you when you are working? If I if I bring you and cast you as Lula in The Dutchman, what would you take from from your work in roots theater to give us Lula? Um, if I am I saying her name right, Lula in in Amara Baraka's The Dutchman, what can you borrow if I were to cast you in that role from from? Uh, you know, to me, roots theater was a real aggressive. Um, reiteration of fundamentals in theater, mm -hmm. which is listening, not just listening on stage, but Shibata said it earlier, listening to your audience and feeling your audience. So it was a very sensory experience for me with Roots. Mm -hmm. Roots also has audience interaction, which is something that I'm not necessarily used to. Mm -hmm. So there was a time when somebody would all throw some garbage on stage if they've extra you, you know. Like these are things that happen during the show. And like I look at Shebby and he look at me and we just know continue, you know, um, and you actually have to incorporate it into your character. Don't be afraid or startled by it. So it's taught me constant awareness and it's taught me um, uh, aware of my audience on the sensory level, but really a lot about listening and timing. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's sort of like, mainstream theater, but on a lot of amphetamine. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be quick, you have to be sharp. It's taught me a lot that way. You know, I think about when we were prepping um, several weeks ago for this particular talk, 
I, we, we try to stay away from these like um, American and European comparison to the art because if you look at anything, you can compare anything to anything. And I don't like the idea of legitimizing anything yeah. that black cultures do by putting it in its place to a European culture or even any um, quote unquote first world culture. I think what you have is what you have. But as I think about the power of roots, the power and the brilliance of roots to speak to an audience that's sometimes being excluded. The, the, the audience who I call the all arts medicine. For me, arts is medicine. Every art is a medicine. And to me, when we leave out groups of people because of their socioeconomic background or their use of language or their history or the tone of their skin or whatever, what part of what zip code, what neighborhood, what part of town they come from. We are, we're poisoning our culture because we're not giving the medicine to all. So I think about Roots Theater in comparison to the gospel stage plays in the US, the works of Tyler Perry and the works of David E. Talbert, which uses that, uses that same culturally specific um, Mores, the Medea character, the, 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 the rising star artist, these particular stock characters, to speak to the masses that sometimes the more gentry, large institutions are not speaking to and are not, are not welcoming in. And I feel like that's what Roots Theatre does. And to do it unapologetically. Yes. And to do it unapologetically. Quite right what you're saying. Yes, Akiba. Yes. And, you know, to think about it, Many people, when we first thought about doing the series, and I, I spoke to some, some folks that I know who are also Jamaican, and I said theater, they said two things. They said the ward and Shibata. No one brought up Baldwin, no one brought up Lorraine, no one brought up Shakespeare, you know? So we have to be able to make a space for everybody to, to be where they see themselves, as you say, Shibata. That is truly profound. Well, um, I mean, yes, I mean, I I'll let you have this, and then we're going to start to close out. I just want to say this about Roots Theatre, and I think I would be so hypocritical and unfair if I didn't get this out. I think what about Roots Theatre and actors of Roots Theatre, I mean, some actors like myself, is, yeah. is that um, when I'm on stage, you have to understand that I'm working. So whatever I'm issuing, you are going to get your money's worth. Now, if you want to leave this going for about what I said, how I portray myself, or how I bring across this thing, it's up to you. You, but you're at a play called Roots Play. We tell it like it is. You understand? We tell it like it is. As Merlin said unapologetically, we, we do that. That is what we do. You understand? So if, for instance, then you are a girl like this, say you're a lady of the night, but you're acting as if you're going to a show, we are going to call you. We are going to call you street light, stop light, pedestrian, white line. We are going to call you something. You understand? Because we are get roots play depicts the life of ghetto people and uptown people, meaning that the upper class and the lower class. And when you merge the two together, you're thoroughly entertained, but yet you leave with something. As Valerie said that we fight now to keep a storyline, yes, we do. So roots of theater has earned its place on the map of theater anywhere. In anywhere world. in the world, yeah, man. You know, as we go on, Shibata, I'm sitting here, I'm watching you, and you know, the director, producer, me is like, man, what show can I bring him up here to do? Because I want some of that Shibata factor at the back of me. Lord, I need it. But uh, Philip Clark talks about um, just one more statement from our audience here. I'm going to take it from Philip Clark. Philip Clark says, Shibata, I know that you say you may not learn much anything from the traditional theater, but I believe that the crossover could widen your reach and strengthen um, your ability to execute. Would you try a crossover? So would you cross over into mainstream theater? Okay, let me Can see I you. cast you in my production of Rhinoceros? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this quickly. I mean, I have done, I have done traditional theater. I have done that. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then Yes, I did pretty good, but when I checked the levels, 
there wasn't anything there exactly that I would really want to take from it. If you understand what I mean, not disrespecting it or anything, not doing that. But you know, being as a child watching all of these traditional theater running, you understand me? How much more can you make it? How authentic can you make traditional theater? That is the reason why I can say that because in traditional theater, as Mayling can tell you and Valerie can tell you, is that you work based on blockings, mm -hmm. you know? And you staging for art. Yeah. You, you have your mark, and there's no night that the audience can reel for you in a traditional theater, and you change your line. You have to be reviewed like that. You mm -hmm. understand? There's no freedom, so to speak. Okay, I, so you need the freedom of improvisation. That if I am going to express myself, body. if I'm going to express myself about the situation i mean i want to express myself the best way possible i don't want to express myself through your eyes i mean you give the situation ask me how do i see it you understand me and if you can do as a director if you can merge it with with the actor or if you can say all right then you're stronger so let us try yours tonight okay Be okay you're, you're telling me you're telling me how to reach you because I'm going to find the place, Shabada. I'm calling you back. I'm calling you. I'm sending that script. But I'm coming back to you. Mr. Johnson can't tell you. Not. Mr. Johnson can't tell you. Every audience, every audience on every night, they are completely different. I can believe it. So exactly. as, we, as we close out, we, we, we're going to just do a quick visioning. Um, and if you can, you know, we're at the end of our time. So if you can make it one nice, clean sentence each or even three words, that would be good. But what's your vision for Roots Theatre beyond COVID? How do we walk through the gateways of the 21st century, preserving this amazing, amazing let part me, of let Jamaica? Let me just stop. Let me just stop to you there. I mean, yeah. after COVID, Roots Theatre is going to take Jamaica, better yet, the world by storm. You know why? Because mm -hmm. persons are dying for entertainment, and they want to live what happened in COVID through the stage. Okay. What about you, Maylin? What's your vision for Roots beyond COVID and through as we walk through the gates of the 21st century? I just the, just the phrase "talk the things" comes to my mind. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, on a virtual platform because of the virus. You know, it COVID not going anywhere right now. You know, Sheb. No, 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 no. What about you, Valier? Let me tell you something, you see. Yes. I am looking forward to see the amount of COVID plays that will come out after, after COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's going to be very, very funny because a lot of people have a whole heap of different experiences during this period of time. And I tell you, some of we hungry again, gone back, <laughs> hungry and suffering, right? So yeah. we have a whole heap of story. And also, you know, we have this whole thing during all the COVID thing, this Black Life Matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we put all that together, and, and of course, yeah. your election over there where people don't want to walk out of the house. Mm -hmm. and all them thing. We, we had all them things. Uh, them roots in the people had everything to them menu when I'm ready. You know. mm. it's gonna be fun. I'm sure it's going to be fun. We're going to see some Black Lives Matter. We know yeah. we're going to see Kamala on stage because Kamala is half <laughs> Jamaica. So I know... Get ready, get ready, Maylin. They're gonna call you to play Kamala very soon. Right, it's right. Funny. Shabana, she's they may call to you to play Kamala too. Yes. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna wrap up and take it home. We have um, let's see. Um, yeah, I do need to devise peace that allows tons of improv. Yeah, you know, the folks in the chat are saying, Yes, Akiva, you gotta find something for, for Shabana to do in Boston, and I will. Listen, next week we are going to talk about the business of Jamaica of the Jamaican stage with the very, very successful Jam Biz Entertainment. Speakers are Lenford Salmon and Glenn Campbell, producers of Jam Biz. Glenn Campbell is also a legendary actor on the Jamaican stage. Lenford Salmon's um, history in theater dates also back to the Little Theater Movement, Trevor, working with Trevor Rome, working even with uh, Ralph Holness and many of the luminaries yeah. that here called today. Jamaicans have a saying when they depart, we say, what good? And what good means, I wish you only the best in your life. We theater people, we have a saying. When we leave each other, we say, see you on the boards. And for actors, that's also a blessing because the boards are the floorboards of the stage. And if an actor says to you, see you on the boards, it means see you at the next gig. 
see you at your next job. So listen to our audience, to our panelists, and to all of uh, everyone who has helped to support us. Walk good and see you on the boards. You hear? <laughs>